So one of the most uh, weaselly, shrill, little conservative uh, political commentators, Mark Levin, he posted some gold the other day. So this is in media. Mark Levin demands to know why Republican billionaires aren't posting Trump's $454 million bond. Quote, this is an outraged. Oh, you can't make this stuff up, man. Oh, you can't make this stuff up. So they go on to explain, you know, the backstory. Trump was able to get the bond for the E. Jean Carroll stuff, $83.3 million. Um, but now he tried to get a bond for the, for the fraud trial in New York, insurance fraud, bank fraud, tax fraud, all that stuff, $454 million. And of 30 companies, zero of them would issue the bond. Zero. And so um, that, of course, pissed off conservatives. But now Mark Levin has a very clever idea. He says... Why I'm going to read in his voice. Why are there no Republican multi-billionaires offering to lend President Trump the funds to file his appeal in the outrageous case in New York State? Are none of them liquid enough to help or join with others to help? This is an outrage. All right, dork, calm down. So, and by the way, he ended up getting roasted in the in the replies and stuff. So, a few points. First of all, why would anybody need to help him if he is this massive billionaire that he claims to be? I, I don't, like, okay, he got himself in trouble. He has to deal with it. In theory, you know, we were led to believe he probably has the funds. So fucking pull yourself up by your own bootstraps, son. This is the old conservative idea. Like, you take care, you handle your own business. This is your responsibility. You got the money, you do it. So right off the bat, he just, you know, just deflecting responsibility away from him. Second of all, yeah, gee, Mark, I wonder why others won't step in to lend him the money. Gee, I wonder. Could it be? Because homie has a track record of stiffing all sorts of different people that he's worked with and that have been allies over the years. Trump's had like seven different attorneys over the past five years, and he stiffed virtually all of them. Now he's down to some like, you know, strip mall level freak who's never done any serious case ever, and now <laughs> representing Trump all over the place, Alina Habba lady. Like, this is where we're at right now. There have been copious articles detailing going all the way back to 2015 and 2016 all the people who worked with Trump whether they're electricians and they were working on a casino of his or a hotel of his and they were plumbers and all different sorts of people and they come out and they say look I like the guy I work with the guy and then he fucking stiffed me I'm out 200 grand for all this work I did for one of his you know his properties there's endless evidence that that's the case also by the way let's be clear Apart from this New York fraud that we're talking about, which they think is bullshit, it's not. But he's already had to pay millions of dollars for the Trump University fraud. It was like over $20 million and a bunch of people proved it was fraud, and he had to pay it out. Now, part of that deal was he doesn't have to admit it was fraud. It's all, you know, it was like a let's cut a deal outside of court so this doesn't have to go any further. And he clearly paid them enough where they would keep their mouth shut. But it was fraud. He committed fraud. And so this is, this is the best you can come up with. It's an outrage. They won't pay for that. By the way, you guys remember uh, in 2020, when Trump was trying to do the whole stop the steal thing, he raised over $250 million to, quote, stop the steal. Nobody knows where that money went. Nobody knows where it went. By the way, Laura Trump just took the reins of uh, the RNC, and they're going to turn that into an organization that is responsible for trying to get Trump across the finish line in the general election. By the way, all the down-ballot races, pfft, you're assed out, son. Good luck. You raising funds to help with your race? I wouldn't count on that. They're probably going to redirect it all to him. So he's got all these packs. He shook down his people before. Now he's got the RNC at his disposal. He's got multiple hundred-plus million-dollar properties. Why the fuck would anybody else... He should have to pay this himself. And again, as you all notice... None of these people ever get into the specifics of the case to say, here's exactly why I think this is wrong and this is wrong and this is wrong. They don't do that because they know the second you entertain any of the specifics, it's impossible to deflect and obfuscate and pretend like there's no merit to any of it. This is why we always say it's 91 criminal charges against him. Is the contention of all these people who are still defending him literally in zero of these cases did he do something wrong? Zero. Even if you want to be as kind to Trump as possible, it's like, you're going to find at least 12 of those fuckers are real charges. <laughs> that he fucking did it, right? But they can't help themselves. They can't help themselves. And by the way, Mark Levin, Weasley little prick, 
was a big uh, DeSantis stand when he thought DeSantis was going to be the one to carry the mantle forward for the Republican Party. As soon as it became clear, God damn it, our boy's not breaking through. Flips on a dime. Right back to coddling Trump's nutsack. Ben Shapiro just did the same thing. He was riding hard for DeSantis in the primary. As soon as it became clear, oh, it's going to be Trump. Ben releases a video where he says, not only am I going to vote for Trump, I'm going to fundraise for Trump. And he goes as far as to say, I would walk over broken, crawl over broken glass to vote for Trump. I don't know if he said crawl or walk, one of the two. I'm going to go over broken glass to vote for Trump, to support Trump. Why are these guys doing it? Do they really have no criticism of the guy? Did they really like, oh, I really love it. No, they're going, mm, it's one of these. Where's the political winds going? Oh, I don't want to piss off my audience. Let's, uh, let's have a competition to see who can be the most sycophantic in defense of this freak. And that's where we are. Telling Republican billionaires. Well, why don't you, why don't you help them with this? By the way, final point. Let's assume, for argument's sake, that happens. Let's assume, you know, the remaining Koch brother or one of the other Republican billionaires steps in, and they're like, you know what? Mark, you're right. I'm going to pay off this fine for him, no problem whatsoever. Don't you realize that sets up a situation where if he's president again, he owes that person everything? Do you think he's going to be governing for what's best for his constituents and the American people? Do you think he's going to be making decisions based on the health of the nation? No. In a situation like that, he is a puppet of whoever would pay that. And by the way, he's already taken a tremendous amount of money from corporations, a tremendous amount of money from other billionaires. He's got all these deals with these other foreign governments. Jared Kushner took millions from Israel. Uh, Jared Kushner took $2 billion from Saudi Arabia. Trump himself has taken at least tens of millions from Saudi Arabia with the live golf events and things of that, ma that nature. There was another article about how the government of Oman has given Trump a tremendous amount of money. He's already subservient to these other interests. He'll make the biased decisions for them. And Mark Levin wants to add to that. Let's add another couple of billionaires who are really going to be the real owners of the country because they helped the president pay off a $464 million, $54 million fraud fine. Here's a pro tip. Just don't do the fraud in the first place. How about that? <laughs> Try that one. <laughs> hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.